Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless as anyone can plainly see the world is in a state of decay moral economic political every way possible people are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone anyone to rescue the planet soon very soon a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. We are in a jungle and we have two big elephants trying to become more and more nervous. If they become very nervous and start war, it will be a big problem for the whole, the rest of the jungle. You need cooperation of a lot of other animals. <laughs> Tigers, monkeys, and so on. Are you on the US or the Chinese side? Because now, progressively, a lot of people would like to see that there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake. Even for both the US and China, we need a single global order. We need a single global order. We need a single global order. A single global order. Our world is preparing for a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world monetary system. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Antichrist will control a one world government. Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. He will control a one world religion. Revelation 13, 11, and 12. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. The Antichrist will control a one-world monetary system known as the Mark of the Beast. Revelation 13, 16-18 He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. There is a new effort underway to regulate every single financial transaction that occurs in this country through something called the Central Bank Digital Currency, CBDC. If that happens, we're done. They can control you with a flick of a switch. 
The cryptocurrency exchange FTX blew up a couple of weeks, so it looks like one of the biggest, maybe the single biggest financial scam in history, and you have to wonder, how was this allowed? So the head of the company was all over the media, and in a number of interviews, he was wearing shorts and playing video games. Why did nobody notice? And where were the regulators? Where was Gary Gensler? Well, they were apparently giving this guy a pass because they knew him or they agreed with his politics. So they're not being punished for what they allowed to happen. Thousands of people defrauded out of their life savings. Instead, they're using the collapse of FTX to their own advantage to push for something called central bank digital currency, CBDC. Now, what is central bank digital currency? Well, that's where all financial transactions are effectively controlled by the central bank, really by the government. And as we saw in Canada last winter, if they don't like what you're doing, they can zero out your savings with a keystroke. So you have no autonomy whatsoever. You are completely under the control of the people in charge who, by the way, may hate you. So this appears to be coming in this country. Several banks have announced already that they're working with the Fed to implement a CBDC. Once again, if this happens, we're done. No more political debate. We will have unprecedented levels of regulation, of surveillance, and of control. It's effectively Chinese social credit scores come to America. The technology is here for the Antichrist to be able to track your every move. Albeit right now, it is in our smartphones. But the technology is also here for the tracking to go from your phone to your right hand or forehead. Imagine what the Apostle John must have thought when in about 90 AD, he saw a vision of this taking place in a futuristic world. People ever since have been baffled as to how any such universal totalitarian economic system could be established or policed. But now the age of technology has arrived. With electronic commerce rapidly replacing cash and virtually everything that is bought and sold being identified and tracked by RFID chipping, it is no longer inconceivable that the financial transactions of everyone in the world could one day be monitored by a centralized agency. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place, and he will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people. And we are seeing an unsaved world rushing headlong into accepting the mark of the beast, and they don't even know it. Russell Brand recently explained all of this in a clip of the new prime minister of the UK, Rishi Sunak, boosting a CBDC for England. Watch this. Is a keen advocate of CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. Here he is, in fact, advocating for them. Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote. <laughs> I like it, because they have got a broad concept. Uh, hmm, what if this person's an idiot? Which we think that they are. It's like a digital penny for your digital money box, for your digital <laughs> hole that you live in. You will own nothing. You will be happy. That could be used alongside physical notes and coins. For now, till we phase them out, if you start any little trucker protests, oh, where's my money gone? The digital piggy bank is broken, I'm afraid. Start being a bit more cooperative. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. That's good, a central bank. Nothing wrong with centralised authority, centralised power, globalist decrees coming down from on high, avoiding democracy. That's exactly what we want. Keep talking. And governments and central banks across the world are working together. Oh! working together. Well, that's just such great news. The IMF, the World Bank. Why don't we involve the WEF and the WHO? What we need are unelected global bodies that have been able to co-opt political power, respond to financial power, and ignore and oppress ordinary people. Whether it's the recent medical emergency or the cost of living crisis, we're seeing the benefits all around us. I can't wait for your next policy. You're going to take our money now. This is great. Looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. I think I know what it means in practice. More power for you, no power for us. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient. Oh, it's got to be energy efficient. I was about to say, is it energy efficient? 
Is it energy efficient? I've got to make sure. Oh, a few other questions. You wouldn't use this ever, would you, to implement control or to advance social credit type systems or to shut down the bank accounts of people you disagree with or to surveil people and have a surveillance network that you've developed in conjunction with big tech and now a financial arm that you're developing so that you can lock step together and gridlock us in a digital prison of surveillance tyranny. Answer to those questions? Oh, yeah. The seven year tribulation starts, and the Antichrist, dazzling people with his signs and wonders, convinces people to receive his mark, the mark of the beast, and it will control all buying and selling. Want to enter a store to shop? Scan your mark, which will be not on your mobile device, but implanted in your right hand or in your forehead. Are you getting the picture? Are you starting to see it all come together? The mark of the beast is assembling itself right before our very eyes. Vivek Ramaswamy is one of the smartest people we ever talked to, author of Nation of Victims, joins us tonight. So here you have regulators in the United States failing in the most obvious possible way to rein in this cryptocurrency exchange. And then in the wake of that, they're not punished, but they've decided they're going to use it to get more power for themselves. Am I misreading what's happening here? I think you're reading it correctly. As the expression goes, never let a good crisis go to waste. Now, I think these CBDCs here in the U.S. are a really bad idea, Tucker, for a few reasons, but it's worth knowing the reason that economists supposedly support it, right? So the main yeah. argument is they say that actually China is doing it and the U.S. will be less competitive and that the dollar would be less strong if the U.S. fails to keep up. There are so many things wrong with that argument, but the first and most obvious is that that's a good path to get us to be more like China, which is not right. a good way for the U.S. to go in terms of being a surveillance state. And actually, it's exactly for that reason that if you think about it, the U.S. could actually have a, have a stronger dollar if it does not jump onto the CBDC bandwagon because people might want to actually hold a currency that doesn't allow them to be the subject of surveillance and control. So you could make the argument equally in reverse about the supposed strong dollar that we're going to miss out on without the CBDCs. And this is, of course, against the backdrop that you know well, Tucker, which is the fetishization of the strong dollar as supposedly a good end-all, be-all anyway. That's right. It actually hurts American manufacturers, and there's a very good reason why China has artificially tried to depress its currency to have a weaker yuan. So, so on many levels, the argument fails. This is not an investment show, but since you're very fluent in this language and knowledgeable, what will this do to gold prices? I mean, if they get close to this, a lot of people are just going to try to opt out of the system, correct? I would think that it has a has a big effect, a positive effect on gold prices. Markets have been a little bit weird in the last year where gold yes. certainly hasn't gone up as you might have actually otherwise predicted right. it to in normal times. But against that backdrop, though, when you ultimately all forms of paper become meaningless and actually go into digital currencies that could be means of governments effectuating control, that might be the last stand for actually gold finally having the last laugh at the end of the day. More importantly, Tucker, is we should not see this great reset, this dissolution of boundaries between the public and private sector, between different nations, ultimately create this new world order. And CBDCs, mark my words, are just the symptom of that deeper cancer. Well, that is exactly right. So nicely put. What does this trend toward an electronic and cashless society have to do with Bible prophecy in the end times? Scripture reveals that the Antichrist will unite the world under one religion, one government, and one united economy. Every person will be required to take a mark in order to buy or sell goods of any kind, but it has even more sinister potential. It is a perfect weapon in the arsenal of a tyrant bent on world domination. As we know from the Bible, a tyrannical ruler will govern the entire world during the last half of the tribulation period, and he will likely use technology to accomplish his purposes as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Technological advances are paving the way for fulfillment of end-time prophecy. These innovations are creating the environment that the Antichrist and false prophet will need to wire this world together for their evil purposes. Even now, it is well within the range of possibility for a centralized power to gain worldwide control of all banking and purchasing. Why is it a person who takes the mark of the beast can no longer be saved? Satan hates mankind because we are made in the image of God, as we read in Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Many people, including myself, believe Satan will somehow combine his DNA with mankind when they take the mark of the beast. 
Man will literally become the genetic son of Satan because he will have Satan's seed mingled in with his own, thus creating man in his own image. And just as the Nephilim in the days of Noah were not redeemable as they were half-human, half-fallen angel hybrids, those who take the Antichrist mark will no longer be redeemable by God. Whether the mark of the beast is an RFID chip, electronic tattoo, or some other device, Christians must be discerning. The Antichrist in the near future will use this technology for his evil purposes of tracking people and controlling their financial transactions all under the guise of worshiping him. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. With tribulation era prophecy taking shape all around us, if you have never called on the name of the Lord, I implore you to do so today, as we can anticipate the Lord's return is not far off. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
you if it came back right now, would you make it? Hell is a real place, and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't but dad me, young lady. I done said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. Breaking news, there appears to be a rash of catastrophic incidents taking place across the state. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. This has been a mañana very spantous day of a catastrophe después del otro. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So robes and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. If you want to be raptured, you must be born again. Citizen of the Minnesota, Korea, we're here for a moment and going the next. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's over! We've all been left behind! <laughs> it's going to be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's going to be sad. For those who are left behind. Life is life as we know it. You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.